That's what keeps pulling us back again and again. Promise of something new, something exciting. The promise of memories we'll keep forever. Fishing is a simple pleasure, really. One that makes us feel connected, makes us feel alive. And when your line tightens and your rod bends, it doesn't matter if you're a six-year-old or a tournament pro. That buzz of excitement hits us all the same way. It's the moment we live for. More than 50 years ago, we wanted to change the way people fish. Moving off the shoreline to where we knew the fish were larger and much more fun to catch on light tackle. So we gave fishermen the ability to see individual fish under the boat. Ever since the little green box, Lawrence has been driven to bring innovative products that provide real benefits to anglers. Today, Lawrence continues to build on its heritage of innovation and enhance its reputation for success, helping regular folks catch more fish and tournament pros capture more championships. It's a fact. More pro anglers count on Lawrence sonar and chart plotter products than any other brand. Folks at home. By a long shot. Yeah. And as you might expect, there's a darn good reason for that. You know, I remember the first time I ever caught a bass on an artificial lure. I was 12 years old in the Pocono Mountains. I walked to the end of the dock. I threw a topwater lure out, twitched it a couple times, and a three-pound bass came up and exploded. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live, uh, Season 2, Episode 6. Guys, tonight, um, I don't have any exciting videos to show you or anything like that. Uh, I've, I've, as many of you know, I've been away. So um, we're going to talk about the uh, dam that I've just got back from mapping. I actually mapped two dams this uh, last couple of weeks. I was up in that Limpopo area, I did Zanin Dam, and I did Ebenezer near Heinitzburg. What a beautiful place. Um, so guys, we only going to talk about Zanin tonight because it's the only chart that I've got done. We'll talk about Ebenezer a little bit later at a later stage. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into Zanin. Oh yes, before I forget, um, if there's time, if I don't get too carried away with the maps as I always do, uh, and there's a little bit of time at the end, I want to show you a really neat little trick that you can do with Google Earth. It doesn't always come into play, but uh, we had quite a unique situation happen recently on Inanda Dam where most of us, well many of us KZN guys were actually on the water at the time when the latest imagery was, was captured. And I just want to show you just something fun to play with with regard to that. If we got time, if I don't get too carried away, like I said. So guys, let's get straight into the whole um, um, uh, uh, Zanin chart thing. First thing that we're going to do, uh, let me just bring this up here, merge that into there. Shut that. Jeez, two of me. That will scare a couple of people, eh? Right. <clears throat> Guys, um, this what we're looking at here now is Zanin Dam on Lawrence's uh, C-Map Genesis. I know most of you are familiar with it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to pause there for a sec. Guys, um, let me just read if anybody's here. Anybody having any issues with the audio or the stream or whatever? Um, uh, good evening, everybody. Richard, Kevin, Yaku, Johan, uh, Colleen, Johan, there we go. Hi, hi, Johan. Uh, Corne, good evening, Corne. Uh, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Neil Daisel, Andy Karaoke has joined us. Kubas, Yannick Fenter, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Um, please, um, if I miss a question, if you've typed something like a question or whatever, and you see that I've missed it, it might have gone down in the feed. So uh, just just, just repeat it again. Um, good evening. It's going to be an interesting. Yes, Corne. Hopefully so. I hope I don't bore you guys because this is all I've got tonight. I'm not very well prepared. I apologize in advance. 
Um, let me see if I can move this down. There we go. Okay, guys, uh, we are looking at CMAP Genesis at the moment. Um, let me show you what you can expect. I'm on my laptop, so excuse me looking away. <clears throat> um, I, I actually wasn't aware that somebody had actually done a lot of work on Zanin with their Lawrence units and uploaded it to their CMAP Genesis account. So um, that was really wonderful. I, I did hear back from a couple of guys that did go to, to Zanin that they did find this and they did use it. It was relatively handy. Uh, some of them said they had a couple of issues with accuracy and whatnot. And guys, I just want to warn you a little bit about this. Um, look, I, I always say something is better than something there is better than nothing. Um, that applies to the um, SA inland charts that you can buy for, I think it's 580 or 620 Rand from a local Lawrence dealer and pop it into the unit. It's got like 40 different dams on it and whatnot. Some of them are actually very good, like Inanda is actually very good, but then many others are really poor and inaccurate and, and what have you. But like I said, something is better than nothing. Um, when I look at the CMAP Genesis chart, it's actually quite good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the accuracy is out because obviously the people that submitted the data here didn't do depth corrections. So you can't really rely on the depth values too much. You've got to be careful here. But um, a lot of the points in peninsulas and whatnot, yes, is actually quite accurate. Um, there, there's definitely some usable data there. So um, keep an eye on CMAP. Always check CMAP Genesis. Remember people, it's free. Free. Not on condition if you've got this and you bought that and you did this and then it's that free. No, no, no. It's free. From your hook twos, from the old elites, uh, obviously the new elite TIs do everything. They basically and an HDS. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, great charts. It's free. Another very nice thing about CMAP Genesis that a lot of you don't realize and only some of the guys that convert over that go over to Hummingbird for example when they get there they say right we'd love these charts like what we had with the Lawrence. Guys you've got to understand the first thing you've got to do is you've got to go and buy a zero lines card for I think it's 1,800 Rand somewhere around that whereas with the Lawrence you can just go to your local China Mall or whatever, buy a little micro SD card, go onto your free account, put it into a 50 Rand ca a card and boom, it's on your unit. And of course you can do satellite imagery. Um, Alan Baker did us a lovely video showing us all how to do that, which is fantastic. Um, and that is all free of charge. It just takes a little bit of computer savvy and boom, 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 you put it together with your CMAP Genesis charts and guys, literally for free, you've got yourself a chart. I know a lot of guys, um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks and I've, I've had a, a, a combination of comments and what have you and some guys say, yeah, John, but your charts are so expensive and whatnot. Remember, a lot of the stuff that is available out there, you can do yourself. Guys, for the last 15 years, I've been fighting, well, let's, let's go back it's about 13 years, 13, 14 years. That's no, 15 years. No, hang on. It is 15 years. I've really concentrated on mapping and bringing mapping to guys and offering charts and whatnot. Only 10 years ago did I start Fish Tech. And in, in that time, we've really concentrated on uh, collecting data, creating charts, and I started selling the charts off and what have you, um, which... I think has made quite a bit of a difference. It's raised quite a bit of awareness. Um, you know, there's the books, there's the education on sonar. I've been doing this on the forums free of charge, no charge for 15 years. However, if you do want to buy a everything all together, you don't want to do it yourself. There is that option, and it's and it's available to everybody. It's not a thing. Ooh, it's only for these certain people. It's for everybody. Anybody can buy my charts. I won't stop anybody from buying the charts. <clears throat> so, yes, let's look. Okay, so that was CMAP Genesis. That's what we did with CMAP Genesis. Always go and look at your CMAP Genesis. What we're going to look at now is we're going to look at <clears throat> 
This is actually on the HDS unit. Um, this is the, let me go back here. This is the contour chart. So straight away, obviously when I was there, the dam was down. This is important. This is important. Um, when I was there, the dam was at 61%, I was told. And from what I could see on, online, it was at 61%. In feet terms, from 100% full down, it was down 33 feet. So these charts that you see of mine now, and these contour levels that you see on, on the charts that I'm going to show you now, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, there's just the con the um, the isobaths with the satellite background. But let me bring some contours in and show you. Uh, we're going to go view, we're going to go categories, we're going to put the lines in. Guys, there's a whole bunch of you that have already bought your charts. I don't know how good the courier is or whatever. I don't know if you guys have received them yet. Um, I doubt it. Jeez, I, I, I only got it out yesterday. So... Um, in the next day or two, there's quite a few of you guys and, and all you guys that pre-ordered and paid up front. Um, you, you'll be getting your charts in the next couple of days. So I'm hoping some of you are watching. I don't know. No, I don't see. I think I only see about, I only see one name at the moment. But anyway, doesn't matter. They can watch it on YouTube. Remember guys, um, tomorrow morning, um, I will take the HD, the high definition uh, recording of the show and I'll put it onto YouTube. So you'll see now it's a little bit, excuse me, something's in my mouth. Um, you'll see it's a, maybe a little bit blurry because Facebook only allows us to stream at 720 uh, on something like this, which isn't so great. But um, the high definition video that I upload in the morning, that is obviously going to be crystal clear. That's a full HD 1080 um, video recording so you can go and have a look at that but um, like I said uh, these values here that you see on your screen at the moment I don't know if you guys can see that <clears throat> you can see my cursor is near number 75 guys what I've done is I have compensated for all my recordings you see these gaps on on the edges you see there's like this red line, which is obviously the shoreline. The shoreline, the software automatically tries to create the first contour for you. But if you're too far from it, it can't stick it together. So you get these big gaps here. Um, <clears throat> so you've got to keep in mind that this data was recorded when the water was down by 33 feet. Um, but when the dam does one day come up, and it does fill up and then it's even going to be filled up more when the wall gets built i heard all sorts of politics with regard to that wall and but it looks like this level is going to be like this for for quite a while so let's see i don't know what the story is there but it sounds like a typical scenario that we have in in south africa um but let me look at here here we had 102 feet uh on the section now let's let's go to something a little bit more uh, fishable Let's go to this 48 feet level here. Guys, you must remember, 48 feet minus 33, you're looking at 15 feet, okay? If you go to this section, you see where it says 48 now, and you go and fish there at the level at which was when I was there, which was 61%, that what you're going to find on your fish finder when you put the depth on is only going to be 15 feet, okay? So you must compensate for that there's no way of going onto the unit and telling it to adjust the depth values for the depth of the dam at, at the time we've had many requests for it i've thought about it and i've thought to myself no no this is not something that we should even entertain uh, or introduce onto the units uh, compensating uh, for depth values you're mucking with something you shouldn't be mucking with there. Rather, remember, get onto the water, get onto a nice big flat bar. Don't go to a cliff face or anything. Go to a nice big flat bar. Go look at the chart, what the depth is. Look at your fish finder. See what the difference is. Make sure you're on 200 kilohertz when you do this. So you get a very accurate reading on, on your depth. You can change to medium chirp later. No problem. Or 83 kilohertz. No problem. But... Uh, if you want to do an accurate depth check, you want your cone as narrow as possible, so you're going to change to 200 kilohertz. 
And like I said, go to a nice flat area like we're on here now. This is a good area to go and do a, a depth check. But generally try and find an area as close to your lawn site as possible. So when you're idling out and warming the motor up, hopefully there's a relatively flat area where you can do this quite quickly and easily. So guys, remember, I have compensated for the depth. This value 48, when the dam is 100% full, I'm talking about the old 100% full before apparently they blew off six meters of the wall or something i don't know what that's about but anyway uh, if the dam was at the old 100 percent mark like if you're walking up to jt3 you'll see where the mark was where the line was where the water was 100 um, percent that was 33 feet down i've deducted i've i've added that to my recordings to make this extremely accurate so if the water was up at that level and you went to the spot now where we are now the depth will be 48 feet if the dam was 100 percent so you must remember that okay um guys i've actually changed something with regard to contours you would have noticed i put on facebook the other day um what do you guys think about combining sediment with the contour charts putting color behind the sediments and what have you and uh, I, I had a very very positive feedback on that and the guys were very keen i got a thumbs up the guys want to see that so what you'll notice is what you wouldn't have seen before uh, normally on the contours view that's all you're going to see what you see on your screen now that's it guys that's what you would have had but without the satellite imagery and all that behind so what we've done is you see there in these gaps, can you see the old contour, I mean, sorry, excuse me, the sediment data? Look on the list down the right hand side of the screen. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's a little bit cut off there. I wonder why it's cut off like that. Anyway, top is Lawrence, then Navionics. We're on contours at the moment. Ultra HF South, Aerial HD, uh, CMAP uh, Demo, Elevation Satellite and Ultra HF North. Um, there's no sediment and this is why if you want to see the old sediment data but in the water area it's very easy you're going to go back I hope you guys can see this you're going to go view you're going to go to categories and turn your area off turn your point on you can leave that on there we go okay can you see what just happened there the actual digital isobaths, which is the vector data, has now been turned off. And what has happened is, we've now got the, the colors, the isobath colors, with the sediment as our, as our contours. But what we can do further now, if it gets too busy, is turn off the lines. So now we've just got the, just got the sediment. It's not quite the old sediment like you and I know and most people know, which was just a black and white um, a, a, a print that was digitally converted and then georeferenced. No, this has now got the color of the isobaths placed behind it. Okay, and yes, I think this, this definitely works. Unfortunately, the dam was down by 33 feet, which was a bit of a problem. And now you've got these gap areas like you see here, which it will get sorted out. Don't worry. But the roads, let me tell you, Zanin is an extremely interesting dam. In all honesty, I should have done Zanin many, many years ago. It is that good a dam for a chart. It's a critical dam for a chart. So it's twisty, it's curvy, there's, there was all roads and there's bridges and there's buildings and there's, all, there, there's everything. Let me tell you, this dam, from a, a, a structure perspective, man, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a very close competitor to, to somewhere like uh, Albert Falls. And having said that, let me tell you, how did people fish this dam without a chart before? Sure. Let me tell you, to get to know this dam well, you would have to spend a lot of time on the water. And if you think you're just going to go on your, on your trolling motor, geez, guys, please, it's a trolling motor, not a trawling motor. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, it's something we're battling with. I'm not the grammar police. I'm not trying to do that. But yo, there's a big difference between a trawling motor and a trolling motor. Um, but 
if you're going to go along the shoreline with your trolling motor um, and cast into the bank, you are going to miss out on a massive part of Zanin Dam. Massive. It's a different story now. The dam levels now are low. A lot of guys can see a lot of this stuff now. Like I've said before in my shows, the guys are out there and taking photos with their care, with their cell phones and, and, and whatnot. Yeah, look, good luck to you with that. I've also done that. I spoke about that many years ago. But when you got onto the water and now you flicking through three, four hundred photographs trying to find that spot, it's it just it just doesn't work, guys. It really and truly doesn't work. But right, so what we've got now is on the contour chart let me just check uh, there we go <clears throat> oh, sorry I'm, I'm just checking if there's any questions being asked no it's relatively quiet tonight that's fine okay guys so keep in mind the sediment chart with only with Janine though eh? the sediment chart and the contour chart has now been combined it's together um, with the satellite okay so you've got satellite sediment contour all in one guess what that saves you another panel on your screen on your display because a lot of guys are saying yeah John but we want to watch the sediment we want to see the contours but we also want the ultra HF and you then then you have to have two units because uh, the Lorentz can only get split to chart plus chart so you can have two different charts on a single display plus depth data or whatever you want okay uh, it will give you that um, but putting this together means in that in that one panel that you're using up you've got contour sediment yeah which is great I think it's great okay um, next let's have a look at the satellite okay the 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 satellite I've also introduced um, contours to the satellite um, it's again it's just so that you know what that depth would be at a hundred percent here we're at that 48 foot you remember we were talking about that 48 foot range just now keep in mind this now if you go to Denis now if it hasn't dropped more than what it was when I was there this would only be 15 feet because the dam was down by 33 feet when I did it so just remember that so um, having said that I tell you what I'm going to turn these depth contours off for now so we can get a better look at there we go so we can get a better look at the satellite image guys the satellite image on Zanin is very good they they captured this when it was at a really uh, low um, when it was very low so you've got some really really key stuff you know sticking out the water um, I know the guys used this a lot during the recent uh, tournament there um, and they, they said you know you could see on some of the points you could see the rocks and you could target those rocks they were in a fishable depth because obviously it was a lot lower back then I don't know what the level was back then I don't know if it was 30 percent or I don't know what it went down to but this must have been very low when when that actually happened so you know this is really really great stuff um, but remember there's always a but what I've done is I've taken a couple of key areas I want to see if I can find one here to show you okay you'll see there's a there's just a few of these um, pictures called air just so that you can get an idea of what the dam looks like when I was there compared to the satellite image uh, you're gonna go tap on air remember you don't have to scroll through thousands of photographs on your phone and try and remember what's where no you just go there you tap on the screen you see the little balloon you tap on the balloon and you tap on image okay that is now using the drone um, having a view looking down towards the launch site uh, this is from the north side uh, that polit from where it turns off to go into the Polizzi River uh, this is looking down the main Hrit Lataba whatever down towards uh, jetty number three launch site and as you can see when we zoom in we get some lovely 
lovely definition here and particularly this area can you imagine when the dam is full looking at this photograph here you can see all these ridges you'll see exactly what it looked like when the dam was down at 61 percent let's see if we zoom in even one more what we get no it won't oh no it actually didn't like that okay um so yeah uh, there you go. You, you've got a couple of these just to get an idea of what it looks like around here. But guys, I want to show you what happens here. Let's say you, you get to this area now. Now the water's come up, the dam level has come up quite substantially. And you want to use your satellite image. Let me tell you, this satellite imagery that I've got here is extremely high resolution. I used SAS Planet. To, to capture this and I use zoom level 19 now the other brands and hummingbird I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna not mention it anymore we it's like when people talk about criminals and that they they use Bravo Mike and all that type of thing we're not gonna do that let's not be children hummingbird cannot handle this size imagery why do I know that because I've done it and I know it doesn't handle it but generally the resolution that you get from satellite imagery is good enough for a hummingbird you can see it um, but you can only zoom to a certain level i was hoping that with a lawrence because of the high resolution screen and the uh, ability to handle multiple images to stitch together we'd get a, a better definition but guys we you see it looks fine here but I have a problem so this is where we use the drone now the beauty of being at the dam when the dam was low was we get to see these kind of things and I can record these type of things with the drone but in this little spot where this uh, cursor is right now there's something very unique something that will come into play will it get moved especially after the, I see the show yes of course it will be moved um, but it's just an example of what the aerial HD does okay does that mean you anyway let's not go down that road um, satellite image there we go can you see the difference between aerial HD from a drone and satellite that's a big difference obviously this was a lot lot lower but it's very difficult to see definition so let's zoom all the way in on this key key piece of structure okay like I said this is on SAS planet zoom level 19 and that and remember this is a HDS 9 carbon this has got an extremely high resolution screen and that is all all you get Ever heard the phrase, you can't squeeze blood out of a stone? That is the situation with satellite imagery. In the States and in parts in Europe, I've gone onto Google Earth and I've zoomed into areas. And let me tell you, the imagery is unbelievable. It is so clear. Here in South Africa, I've never seen it like that. I've never seen that type of clarity as what I've seen in some um, Western countries, European countries. So, unfortunately. But, like I said, we have the drone, the aerial HD level. It's not of the whole dam. I did, I did 15, 14 sections of the dam, which I felt were critical sections. Uh, there were a couple more I would have liked to have done, but my vehicle got threatened. Uh, it became a very volatile situation, and I had to leave. So that's all we've got at this point. Um, let me go to aerial HD. Now, guys... I hope I don't have to explain this, but can you see, that's what everybody else has got. That makes a difference. That type of quality, that type of imagery makes a difference. What, what does that uh, stick look like from the shore? We don't have to scroll through thousands of images. No, there it is there. That's that bank coming out. There's a rock there on the right hand side. This is a little point that goes into that little bay. And there is the stick back there. Let's see if can we can zoom in. Okay, it gets a little bit blurry now. 
but there it is there. That was taken from the water of that stick. Will it get moved? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it not being moved. Let's 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 put it that way. So, um, you know, as you can see, there's some incredible definition here, some really really first class definition. Something else that I want to show you, where um, this comes in really really handy. I want to show you. I remember seeing a little spot down here. Yes, I like this area here. Okay, from this area here, there's something very unique here. Something you need to know. But from the air, it's very difficult to sort of get definition. Um, you know, to sort of, sorry, I just want to check if anybody's asked anything or... Um, Yes, Reinhardt. <laughs> sneaker motor. Let's sneak around. <laughs> uh, okay. No, there's no questions. Reinhardt, I'm not sure what you mean. Still give you a good idea where shallow and deep areas, drop or fix area, easy enough to go to spot and double check depth after calculations done. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean, but anyway. Um, elevation. You click on the elevation view. Now, if you go back to Aerial HD, that there looks like an anthill, okay? That there looks like an anthill. Which anthill is higher, that one or that one? Now that is valuable information and this is where elevation data comes in so if you were looking at this chart and this was fully covered i would prefer to go to the taller anthill let's just see if we've got a photograph of that anthill so you can get an idea of what to expect yeah there we go you know this actually shows it beautiful that's exactly what i'm trying to say that if I'm right, guys, if this is an anthill, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm taking a bit of a fly here. But that mound there, to me, that looks like an anthill. Um, can you see how tall that one is? And look how flat the one at, at the back there is. Okay? So that, this is where the elevation view comes in and is very, very important information. I really and truly love elevation. Not only that, if we go back there, we can see there's a little lip taken out there. On the side if you see where the cursor is you can see there's a little spot taken out but the elevation view shows it really nicely you can see it's a serious it's a steep little drop off let's go back to aerial HD and let's see if we got a photograph of that of that little chunk that's of that little washout or whatever you want to call it now there we go okay there's your washout. You've got some bush behind it. Obviously, it's going to get flooded. The lighter stuff is going to rot off. I don't know what type of plantain, what type of uh, flora that is, whatever. Uh, is it going to die? How much of it is going to die? How much is going to be left behind this? I, I, I don't know. But I just like this type of setup where you've got to wash away like this and you've got that. Now, imagine being on the water. Remember, when you go back to this shot there and you tap on that there and you tap on 126 you've got a couple of options here you've got the go to your bottom left of the screen can you guys see oh you can't see it why has it done that anyway you're gonna have to take my word for it at the bottom of the screen it says go to that is for if you're using an xi5 uh, motor guide uh, trolling motor your motor guide would automatically take you there to that exact spot where the photograph was taken from. Then you will press image and you would get that. So if you were spot blocked on that area, regardless of the weather conditions, and you were sitting there, you know from that position, that's what that thing looks like. That gives you a great idea on how to approach it, how to cast to it, how to present your bait to that type of cover, that type of structure. So that is a really, really great tool right there so yeah let's okay uh let me not uh is there anything else um a3 what's which one is that 
Okay, this is uh, closer to the launch site. Uh, you can actually see the launch site area there. There's jetty number three. You can see it on the left hand side there. Um, again, it's nice. You know, when the dam's full, it's nice to have this type of imagery so you can see what it looked like before. You can see something interesting there in the corner, what have you. So there aren't many of these, but there are some really good ones. Um, with regard to coverage of these aerial HD uh, areas, there is quite a bit. Um, this is a very key area. I really like this, this area. Um, guys, I must be honest, uh, the Elite TIs work brilliantly with the, with the charts. The Gen 3s work brilliantly with the charts. Um, the charts are starting to get very complex. It's starting to get a lot clearer, more detailed, and it's putting a lot of pressure onto the units. So strangely enough, I haven't had a problem with the TI yet. It's, it's, it seems to handle it beautifully. Um, but going forward, I can see that where the carbon is going to start to start playing a role with the higher RAM, the higher uh, processor speeds and whatnot. But thank goodness for now, Elite TI, Gen 3 and um, the carbons are handling fine. They do work with the old Gen 2's touch and buttons, but they are slowing down a little bit. Those units are taking strain so we're going to have to just keep an eye on that there okay um yeah so anyway let's get out of here um let's look at ultra high frequency this is now the information that we can use now it's readily available now let me just turn off these contours here because they're getting in the way categories we're going to turn that off there we go um you can see there's incredible detail here. The Ultra HF really, really makes a difference. You can see that key, key stuff. Things that now, um, if we look at that little rock pile there, you want to know what depth that is. Let's put the lines on there. Uh, it's in 45 feet of water, 45, 46, 47. Let's call it 47 at that point there. Uh, 47, that's 13, 14, 15. Yeah, 47 feet. Jeez, I've gone brain dead. I just hit a blank. <laughs> I can't believe. Okay. Um, minus. Sorry, I'm. I got distracted there, and I went mad. Okay, that rock pile there. Now is in 14 feet of water. That, in this last tournament, that type of thing would certainly, especially here, look how this, how it trailed all the way up here. This would have been a key section to fish, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying this, this exact spot, but I'm saying this idea of this depth range, this type of cover, these rocks going out at an angle like this, in this depth, th this is the, the type of thing that you want to... Um, you know target in a case like this when the water's down just keep in mind i'm going to go back to the categories turn that off there i just want to show you what the coverage looks like um there's a lot of really good detail here you know clear crystal crystal clear detail key key areas of of the dam um a lot this this was a massive job guys this was a lot of coverage even though the dam was so low i'm so glad that i had the opportunity to get here i mean look at this this is just the north section that is just the north section of the dam i couldn't even process it as one uh, layer um the chart creator just bombed out completely it was just too much information Okay, I had to split the dam between north and south so that the map creator, the IMC, could actually handle it. So in this case, if you want to look at the stuff in the south, you would ha actually have to go Ultra HFS, which is ultra high frequency south, and then 
go and have a look. Um, let's just see. I think this was down near the bridge. Yeah, this is near the bridge. You can see the pylons from the bridge there. And you've got this type of detail there. You know, this is really, really first class um, information that really will make a difference to your fishing. Because remember, guys, all the charts are there for is to make you aware of what is around you at all times. Imagine if you went fishing down the bank and then you closed your eyes. How do you, how do you know what to cast to? Or if, if you didn't have the charts, let's say you only had the Hummingbird 360, this blurred guesswork, what? Is that the amount of brain power that goes into trying to interpret what you're seeing on your chart on your 360 view it would be very very difficult but with high definition charts the high definition charts long number one tells you what direction to go where to take your hummingbird whatever you use your 360 whatever takes you to that area what I like about the 360 is when you arrive at the right location the, the 360 is totally this is the hummingbird 360 is totally totally independent of gps guys i don't know about you but i'm having a problem with gps lately driving along in a straight line slowly and my track is all over the place my epe is fluctuating all over the place and it's I thought maybe it's a unit, then I put another unit, and another unit, and it's all doing the same thing. So guys, this is coming from up there. It's, it's the satellites that are having this issue, these, these little glitches. And when you make that first cast to your target, you don't want your EPE. This is what we talked about last month, the EPE going all over the place and not knowing where we're casting to. We want to know when you make that cast, it's going to be exactly on that piece of cover or structure or whatever it might, might be. And that is a valuable tool to me. So, yes, if you see me fishing, casting to offshore structure, what am I going to have on my boat? I'm going to have a lovely big HDS carbon and guess what I'm going to have next to it? Yes, a Hummingbird 360. Because I have only ever fished two ways there's only two ways that i feel totally comfortable fishing one is trolling because i know i can troll very very accurately i've had many years of experience with it i love fishing like that um i've had some fantastic results with it um, and the other way i like fishing is drop shot because when i get to the thing that i'm fishing i turn away from my charts completely and i'm only depending on my sonar so i can see that i'm on my target all the time so it's the only way i feel comfortable the minute i have to start casting from the boat to a target unless it has a marker boy on it i feel very uncomfortable and i can tell you many times i've cast and cast and i thought no man i'm spot on i'm making the pit but i can't feel the brush or i can't feel the rock what is it it's the gps messing about and that is where the the roundy roundy the hummingbird 360 comes in it's not dependent on gps you look down at your 360 you see that blurry thing that you have no idea what it is look at your charts you know what it is from your charts and you're going to make a cast to that blurry thing at least the range and the direction as long as you've got your 360 set up properly go and look at my video from last month very important guys very important a lot of 360 guys and another thing I noticed recently, Brandon Polanek and these guys putting two compasses side by side. Hi, Bo. No, man. You, you can't put two compasses side by side. They're magnets. The one interferes with the other one. Anyway. It's very, very strange. That's not him fitting it. Obviously, somebody installed it like that, which is crazy. So, yeah. Um, guys, the Ultra HF lot of lot of coverage on on Zanin uh, it's it's all there it's all there it's really 
valuable, valuable, good stuff. It's there. When the dam comes up and gets higher again, and a lot of the vegetation dies off and whatnot, I will return to Zanin. I will record all of that information, and that will be an update on the charts. So if you've got a, a valid subscription and you're in your valid subscription period, it's free of charge, except for the couriers, of course. You send the card back to me, I'll update it for you, free of charge, send it back to you, and all you pay for is the courier. Or if you're lucky enough to be in the area, just pop in, drop your card or phone me ahead, say, listen, I'm going to pop in, swap out a card and move on. And whoop, we do it. We just do a quick swap, have a cup of coffee if you've got time, and we're done. Okay, so um, that's that's how we'll handle this type of scenario. So um, let me just see if there's any more. Uh, Corne says, yes, rock piles was definitely very critical to identify. Yes, um, I did also get some other feedback and quite right. Yeah, Corne, I think Jacques was also telling me that uh, the rock piles did did play. It's not the only thing that, that played. I, Jacques, you know, I heard a lot of things that 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 work but it would have just been nice to have this type of information but guys going forward remember this is available to everybody and I'm really appealing to the hummingbird guys out there you know I know there appears to be this terrible war between Lawrence and hummingbird I have been talking about hummingbird and using hummingbird 360 in particular for Two years now nearly where I've said no there's a place for this thing okay um, I accept the technology I recognize where it's weak I recognize where it's strong just because I am a blue-blooded Lawrence fanatic I love Lawrence it checks more boxes than any other brand in the world um, I see a place for 360 like now recently uh, Garmin has got that pano, uh, Panoptics uh, live scope. There's one video out there, two, in fact there's two videos out there that are just mind-blowing. Absolutely fantastic. But then there's a lot of videos now that have come up on Bass Boat Central, on Facebook, whatnot, where just your average user has now got one or a Garmin Pro staff has got one and he's using it and he's putting videos up and he's so excited. It looks nothing like the first released video where you actually see a, like a carp come through. You actually see uh, what looks like a pike come through the beam. Look, they're massive fish. Those were huge fish. Uh, but it was just absolutely wonderful to see. But what I'm starting to see from actual users, you know, weekend, can we call ourselves weekend hackers? No, not looking so good. But let's give it an opportunity and let's see. Guess what? If I can go into a shoal of fish, especially in an area that I don't know, that's unfamiliar to me, and uh, my side scan lights up, my, I mean my down scan, my side scan, my sonar lights up, and I have a species issue, imagine if that Garmin can actually identify species in our size that we want to target. Just think about that for a sec and what the value is of that. You could go through a shoal where you say, oh, look at all these fish, I've got to fish this. But then you scan it and you see, that's not bass or that's not what I'm after. That's something else. That has got value. I think that really and truly has got some, some value. Uh, with regard to uh, species identification. So, wonderful. I still think the most important thing I would love to see, and I don't care who brings this out, I would love Lawrence to do it, obviously. We need fish radar. I don't want to see the imagery. I'm not interested in the imagery around me. We've got charts for that. We've got structure map for that. Don't worry about that. I want to be able to drive up to a uh, brush pile from a castable distance, scan it with my fish radar, and see, number one, has it got fish on it? If so, is it on this side? Is it on top of it? Or is it to the right? That's all I need, just little dots. Even if it's just an overlay on my charts. Okay, I wouldn't know how you would tell the difference between top of the brush pile, 
Well, obviously you would because the dots would just be directly on top of the brush pile. Okay, let me not be silly now. But I'd like to see dots as an overlay on my charts of where there's fish. I have no idea how they do that, but boy oh boy, the guys that bring that out, they're going to rock the world. They Forget about the imagery. Let's forget about the imagery. The guy brings out fish radar. That is, that, that's going to put fish in your boat. So guys, I don't care who you are, uh, bring that technology and I'm, and I'm all for it. We're going to do that. Right, how are we doing time-wise? Um, 1948. 10 2. Uh, geez, have I showed you everything? We went through elevation, we went through um, Ultra HD. Uh, did we miss anything here? No, I think we've we've pretty much we've pretty much covered Zanin. Um Yeah. Let's 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 leave it there. Um, look, I'm probably going to get some feedback from the guys once they receive their charts. If there's anything that does pop up where the guys say, "No, look, we'd really like you to sort this out or that," of course we will do it. Uh, I've tested them. I've worked with it tonight, as you guys have seen. Everything seems to be working fine, fine to me. Um, let's yeah, let's let's see how it goes. But I think it's a really great chart. So I know there's a tournament coming up there at the end of the month. It's some FLW uh, tournament thing. It's a cash prize type of deal. Uh, guys, get, get your charts. I, I, I really think it is going to make a difference. Remember, um, you, you might change boats, you might change um, outboards, uh, you might change weight. Uh, uh, you, you're going to change tackle, you're going to change all these things. Your fish tech charts, you're always going to have. You're always going to have. You don't have to renew your subscription every year. But when you feel you do need an update for your charts, you've got one of two options. Either you pay a thousand rand for 12 months and you get all your charts updated. I don't care how many charts you got. You can have all the charts. You send me the whole lot and I'll update the whole lot free of charge for one year. So you can do that, just pay the thousand rand. Or if you don't have many charts and you were looking at buying a, another chart and you didn't want to spend a thousand rand plus uh, 3,400 Rand, for example, for the Zanin chart. Buy the Zanin chart. With the Zanin chart comes a 12 year subscription, and that includes all your other charts. So you have all your other charts renewed to save yourself on courier. When you do place the order for your Zanin chart, for example, say, Listen, have you got updates for this, this, and this chart? Either there is or there isn't. If there is, I'll say, Send it back first, send your cards back. We'll update that. We'll take your new chart. We'll put it in the little overnight bag with Globeflight or Postnet or whatever. And whoop, there it goes straight back to you. So I think that's the way going forward um, with regard to, to, to charts. And guys, like I said, you're going to have the charts for many, many years. Um, yeah. Okay, let's look at something different. I said we, if there's a little bit of time, we were going to play around with. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's merge that in there. Okay, that's what I want there, but I don't want to see that. I want to show you. And over here, I want to change this chart while that's happening. Change that over there. Okay. Can you see that? That's in Ander. Okay. I'm just changing charts here quickly. I'm going to have to be quick. We've only got 10 minutes. And I'll start that one up. Okay. Guys, this is just a fun little thing. Um, I think we can have a little bit of fun with, with this here. Um, I was looking at in Ander the other day. Let me just quickly see um, <clears throat> any comments. Uh, Hi Steve, Steve Engelbrecht, Mark Bywater, Kurbus, Kevin von Straten, Roger Evers, Voldo, Snakeskin SA, uh, Clint, how's it Clint? Long time. Um, Cornet says Saba Northern Juniors also coming up. Well, there we go. Guys, sorry, no more sponsorship. But I don't want to put a damper on, on the show. But guys, no, 
I'm, I'm not sponsoring charts anymore. We've, we've had too many backfires with it. It causes too many problems. And I'm not, they say, uh, uh, once bitten, twice shy. And what's the other one? Catch me once, shame on you. Catch me twice, shame on me. I'm tired of shaming myself. I'm done shaming myself. So please don't even ask. <clears throat> I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, Michael Cannon, nice Charles John. Now I can see. Yes, hi. Good evening, uh, Mark. Yeah, they really are awesome, man. Um, guys, what happened was I was looking at the Inanda um, satellite imagery that you can see on your screen there. And I realized that was my mate Daniel's van. We were here this day. And this was KZN regionals or whatever it was. It was some... What? What's going on here? Okay, there we go. Sorry, something was not working in, in the background there. Uh, let me see how I get distracted on live thing. But I want to get to the right place here. I know you can't see it. I'm, I'm on the HDS at the moment. Uh, let me see if I can try and multitask. Us men are not good at multitasking. That That is a woman's job. Multitasking. Hey, ma. That's a different story for us guys. We can't do that. Walk and chew bubble gum. Uh -uh. Oh, eh, eh. Okay, there we go. Now I'm on the right spot. Put that onto satellite. Satellite. There it is there. And it works. Okay. So, what I was saying was, what happened was, I realized, hang on, we were here. This was the Saba regionals in whatever you want to call it. It was some tournament and it was busy. And how do we know it was busy? Because I quickly thought, let me go and have a look at the parking lot and see what the parking lot looks like. Hey, oh, look at that. So I thought, hang on, that's, that's, that is definitely the day we were there. And this cat here, this like sitting off this point, I remember this like, well, he camped here. This I camped on this spot for a long time. And it's a good spot. Eh? This really is very often a, a spot that is missed. But then some guys have worked it out. It is a great spot. Um, there's a nice point that runs out there. I'm going to show you now. But before I show you on the HDS what, what you can do here. What I decide to, to do. Don't judge me. It's just a fun thing to do. Don't go and get upset and he's got my spot now and hey this thing with spots <sighs> I don't know what to even say about this anyway so what I did was the only thing that hasn't come up and I did create it earlier was spot zero spot zero is quite important because you want to know by how much is the dam down so basically what I did was I created waypoints for as many boats as I could find fishing on the water. And those were all the boats. There was a very popular spot. You can see all the guys marked there. Uh, here inside taxi. A whole bunch of buddies fishing here. Um, there over here. This was me and Daniel in a little uh, Tug 20 with the drone and we were filming the Oaks. Uh, there was Johan VC over here. There was Martin de Kock over there. And I think this was Brian Le Pen. I'm not too sure. Um, but anyway, I, I can't identify the individuals. Let's not look at that. But I thought, let's go and have a look where they were fishing. Just for interest sake. Because we've, we, we've got that information now. So I'm going to merge this into here. Guys, we've got four minutes left. So I must do this quickly now. Let's go straight away. Uh, you know what? Let's not buck about. First thing we need to do is we need to find out how much is, is, was the dam down by. So we're going to go to that waypoint zero, which is there. We're going to turn on the contours quickly. Uh, contours. Now I've got to be quick. How are we doing time-wise? Is anyone asking? No, no. Um, back, view, categories, lines. Uh, 12 feet it says 12 me 12 feet so we're looking at four meters down 12 feet down so sure so whatever depth we see guys in we've got to subtract 12 feet from that 
I think it's a little bit more, it's probably a little bit off because it's Google Earth. Remember, Google Earth isn't always very accurate, but for, the, for this exercise, let's call it 12 feet. In fact, I know it's a little bit more than that, but for the, point, for, for the purpose of this exercise, let's, let's call it 12 feet. So let's go in here. You see, it was definitely more than 12 feet because these guys then would have been on land if it was 12 feet because this is saying it's only 8 to, to 10 feet. So there's a little learning curve for us. But let's go back to, to see what these guys look like. I'm just going to merge this across quickly. I want to uh, zoom in here. See, there they were there. That they were, and there was, there was a reasonable, I think they were fishing extremely shallow. It was very, very shallow. I, I've got no doubt about that whatsoever. But let's see what they were actually fishing. These, these four boats here. Or were there um, four? Right, oh, there were four boats here. So I'm going to zoom in here. This is in Taxi Bay. And we're going to go back. We're going to go to the contours. Let's go Aerial HD. See if we've got anything there for Aerial HD. Let's go back. We'll go to view, we're going to go to the categories, we're going to turn all that off. There we go. Okay. Right. Can you see? Number eight. What was he fishing? Bang. Clear as day. He was obviously fishing that little stump there. Number nine. Number nine was fishing these stumps. You can see those stumps there was in very shallow water okay this was a lot you know the the dam was a lot lower when when i recorded this um that guy was very shallow but you can see what what he was uh targeting that timber there um let's look at let's see if we've got a photograph of what that looks like there we go you know this was done when the dam was obviously a lot higher that's looking into taxi bay um you can see all the timber as you come into taxi on your left hand side there let's see this one there same same type of deal but when the dam was a lot higher so yeah let me not go into too much detail as to what is actually here how are we doing it's 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 eight o'clock guys let me not drag it on for for too long um so yeah you know in in a case like that where you have a unique situation with uh, google earth and you've got your fish tech charts you just go onto google earth drop a couple of pins on the boats convert it, save it, convert it to a USR with our free GPS track maker, uh, pop it onto your unit and you can look on your charts and see exactly where everyone was fishing and what they were fishing and the depth and all that type of thing. It's, an, ugh, it's a fun little exercise. Let's not go and see spooks and witch hunts and oh, drama and let's not, not go there. Just see it as a fun little exercise. Doesn't happen very often, but it is a unique one. Maybe the guys that don't know Inanda very well, you can learn quite a bit from this. You can see where the really good anglers were fishing and you can gain some tips from that. You'll need to buy the chart, obviously. So give Colleen a call and buy your Inanda chart from her so you can do that. So, um, yeah, uh, let me just change this. I want to bring that up there. <clears throat> Put that in the background. Put that over there. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Um, I know there weren't a lot of videos and I was trying to maintain that sort of thing going forward with the show. I'm going to try and get some more stuff this month. So next month we can have some videos again and learn a little bit more from, from that on the water perspective. But uh, I think it was important to get some information out there on the Zanine charts. And um, yeah. I think it's a fantastic chart. Give us a shout. And uh, remember, um, you will need your Lawrence units, preferably um, Elite TI or your HDS Carbons. The HDS Carbon with its ultra high resolution screen is really the way to go, to actually go. And guys, last thing I want to say, we still have not sold a Carbon 16 to a Bass guy. Guys, you have got to see what these charts look like on a Carbon 16. It is unbelievable. The Hummingbird 15 has actually got a very low resolution. The 10, the 12, and the 15 have all got the same resolution. So all you've got is a big screen and everything's blurred because it's 
pulled out, not with the carbon. The carbon is full, full HD, 1920 by 108. Oh, that is full HD. You can't believe what these charts look like on a carbon 16. And I believe, I know it is a lot of money, but a lot of guys, let me tell you, before um, we, we had that big Lawrence price drop, uh, uh, 2017, we had a big price drop in the Gen 3s. Uh, before that price drop, people had no problem dropping 70,000 Rand on an HDS 12 carbon. No problem whatsoever. But now you can get a carbon 16 for 88,000. It's a bargain. The, the, the guy, there's only two available in the country at, at the moment. Guys, be the first person to have a carbon 16. Put it up on the bow of your boat. You won't regret it. It's a phenomenal unit. So yeah, give that a little bit of thought. Guys, um, remember, I'm, I'm always on Facebook. You have any questions or whatnot, by all means, give us a shout. And uh, yeah, let's, let's take it from, from there. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And uh, I have no idea what we're going to do next month. But if you guys have any ideas, please don't hesitate to drop me a mail or a call or a WhatsApp or whatever and say, listen, this is what we'd like to talk about. Or if you'd like to even be on the show, if you can't make it in person, uh, we've got a, uh, we, you can phone in and I can put up pictures. You can send me some pictures that you'd like me to put up behind and we talk about your, your fishing story or whatever you want to try and help us with. I would really love that. Guys, I'm really, um, I think guys get a bit tired of listening to my <laughs> ramblings so it would be nice to have guests on the show so please uh, give me a shout say i'd like to be on the show uh, um, i can't be there i'm just going to phone in but i'm going to send you some pictures or a video or whatever we can play in the background while we talk that would be really awesome so so give that some some thought guys thanks again and uh, yeah that was uh, season two episode six i'll see you next month in august believe it or not cheers everybody